Okay, listening, yeah? The Rebbe says, Levana v'chama mekabel v'mashpir. The moon and the sun correspond to a receiver and a giver. We know this. The moon only reflects the light of the sun. Shalavana leit le migrama klum. The levana, the moon, has nothing of its own. Mekabelas oira machamad. It receives its light from the sun. The way hashpa, hashpa means the flow of shefa, the flow of influx from a from the giver, from the source, to a receiver. The giver, the way that this this influence of infl- or, or this influx is really the right word for it, is it, it works at the beginning. The levana only that the moon or the receiver only receives a very little. Which is Mualad Handelvan and Akud Bilvat. So the point of re- the beginning of reception, it's just a certain dot, like you can't even see anything there. And every day it increases, uh, just like the Levana, just like the moon, increases its light every day from the from the birth of the new moon. It every day gets a little more, but at the moment of birth is almost you can't see what's there, it's so little. So it is in general between the receiver and the giver, which is in the spheres, it's in their anpin and malchus. The whole relationship of giver and receiver is like that, that it starts with a single point, and then it grows from there. Until the day of the 15th, which is where the discus of Levana is complete. The whole light is complete. You'll see how... These are mystical terms. He's going to spread. He's going to make it very practical, and we'll understand exactly what happened to Gimel Thomas, exactly where Mashiach came. And this this is the Nekud of Mashiach's coming. So we have to bear with the marshal of the moon because this is why we say David Melchis Chachai Vakaim. But now we're going to understand this mystical secret from from the inside. So on the day of the tell of the fifteenth, that the discus of Levan is complete. It's called then Kaima Sihara Bishlemusa. That's the Zohar's terms for saying that there exists the full moon. But this Beshlemusa means its completeness, which means the reception was complete. Now there's a complete vessel. Which means that it was completed and perfected the light that was received, that the, the, the moon received from the sun. However, even when the moon is full and it's light, it's complete, its vessel is complete, it's filled with light, it's still a receiver. It's the sun's light that the moon received. This is not the ultimate goal. The ultimate completion of the moon is when it becomes no longer a receiver from the sun, it lights the original essential light as the sun. Again, the word, it doesn't need to receive the light from the sun anymore, because the moon became like the sun. This is why the Pasuk says, This is a Pasuk in Yeshayahu, that talks about the days of Mashiach. It says, in the day, and the light of the moon would be like the light of the sun. Moshe Haisa Kodim Yuta has was the set, the state before the contraction of the moon. Sod Miuta Alvana, the story in the Gemara in Chulin, that Hakadosh Baruch Hu said to the moon, "Go make yourself small." The moon came back. Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, "There cannot be two rulers." Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, "You're right. Go make yourself small." What is the moon? What is what is what does mean moon and the sun? The sun is Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and the moon is Knesset Israel. And before the symptom. The Kadosh Baruch Hu, Knesset Israel, were all one. As the Zayar says, Israel, right? The Kudsh Baruch Hu Then, once there was became a Kadosh Baruch Hu in Israel, once became the sun and the moon within after the Tzimtum, once there's creation, now ah, you can't have two two rulers. There has to be a giver and a receiver. A Mashpia and a Mekabel. So he says, yeah, absolutely. He says to the moon, go make yourself small. Is that aspect of a Kadosh Baruch Hu became small, became became enclosed in a goof and in a sense of ego and a sense of independent self that, that it became a mekabal. Now it's receiving from Hashem. In the days of Mashiach, you no longer be receiving from Hashem. You'll be one with Hashem. And this is kind of the point that the Rebbe is starting to explain here, but he's using the mystical secrets of the moon and the sun and the moon receiving from the sun. And this was, this was, a, this was always this concept, but it was always hidden. And now it's openly in a revealed way. Now, 
I already gave you more okay. than what the Rebbe is. The Rebbe is building up to it. But you also have to... Oh, another way to look at this, by the way, is in the relationship between Rebbe and Hasidim. This is also why this is the, the highest point of the Sikhs of Nunalf Mubez. It's nine months. It's nine months after the beginning of the Vesos of Gula, of, of I've done everything I, I can, now I give it over to you. And from the, the, the this is the year of Mashiach's coming, and it's coming any minute. And the, we, we are already... This is now the highest point. So this is now the highest point. Yeah? What is, in the, what is the Rebbe talking about in this highest point? It's talking about the moon no longer receiving the light from the sun, but becoming, becoming like the sun. My dear children, from this point, you are no longer receiving from me. A chassid, for a relation, a chassid the Rebbe, the Rebbe was incomparable, greater than it was like Mashpir and Mechabal. The Rebbe was the wellspring of chassidus. And a chassid was receiving from the Rebbe, receiving his kashos, receiving uh, teshuva, receiving all these the different madregas in, in Avedis Hashem, all came from the Tzad. Av and Yira specifically. Av and Yira and Now the Rebbe is saying, you have the same thing in you. Now you're now not because of your effort. Two hundred years ago, someone with a lifetime of work will get to the level of being a tzaddik gomer and to be on this level. Exactly what he just said over there: tzaddik, tam, yashar, and chassid. Tzaddik, you can't be anymore. But you can be a chassid, which is higher than a tzaddik. What is this thing of a chassid? This is the moon, but it's incomplete. We don't know what it's saying. Huh? Right, but at the same time, what everybody is saying is you're higher than tzaddik, and you have it now. Not, but not by your effort, not by your toil, because this time because the time is up, and he explains what it means. The time is up, and Mashiach came. Now you have to internalize. It. Yes, you have to reveal the fact that you're it. And that's a process that goes through the world. It's a process that's been going on for 20 years since then. It could take 20 years more. But he's telling us what the process is. Remember we said at the moment of the hashpa, at the moment that the spark comes out, that the, the, the receiving begins, it's a certain spark you can't see it anymore at all. It's like the first uh, embryo. It's the first two cells of an embryo. You can't see anything. So now 20 years later, you see more and more and more. But it has to be revealed because we're still in Mechavah. Once it's openly, then all of a sudden that, that this will become openly revealed where every Jew will be on the level of, of Rashbi. Everybody will be on the level that they're Mechavah Um It starts here. And it specifically starts in the Sikh and at this time of the year. Kislev, nine months after. Husband and wife have to a single entity. So you can say, you should say, that when the light of the moon is complete, this is a higher level as it was that the moon is like the sun. The light of the moon like the light of the sun. Ah. Now, how is it possible for the moon to be the same, the light of the moon to be essentially not being just receiving from the sun, but to reveal its own essential light, which makes it as bright as the sun? The, a revelation of a level that's higher than the moon and higher than the sun. The sphere of Kesser. And this in, this is what, what the, where the, in the Pasuk it says, the light of the moon will be like the month of the sun. It will no longer be like the will, will be like the light of the sun. Keser echad lishnem. So there'll be one crown for both of them. Both the mashpia and the mekabel are both united by one level that's higher than both of them. When that level that's higher than both of them, which is atzmus or inside, which is higher than the seiv and memalikol amin. When that level is revealed, which is the level that's revealed in the yichida of every single Jew. And whenever a Jew connects with his Jehi, his Megale, this Atzma Saint Sof, Shalemala Misoyv Memale, at that point he unites Sof of Memale, and, even, and then all of a sudden, this you as a physical person in the physical world become greater than the greatest level of the, of the spiritual realm. Because you are Megale the Atzim in you. This is the concept of the Beis Mikdash. Now, this is only possible, this is what I said now, it's called the Vodas Yechudim. This is only possible after the end of a Vodas Abiruri. And this is the famous sikh that the Rebbe said this time of Avodah Sabirurim and explains. Now we understand what it means this time of Avodah Sabirurim. Avodah Sabirurim was the whole, this, all the time, the work of the sifting, the 288 sparks, 
was only the time of when there was a receiver and a giver, and the moon was receiving from the sun, it had nothing of itself, and it, it, it means that creation was independent, and yet this journey of sifting through right and wrong, and, and the certain darkness, because sometimes you get more, sometimes you get little, now uh, the, the, the network is complete, you are, you, you're, you're, uh, you're automatically you know, in, in this level of, of, of Yehud, where you sing Elokus openly. It's a, it's, a, it's a deep concept. It, it connects to the original symptom, to the reason for the first symptom. This is the the sod miut alvanat, the secret of the less of the of the this making the levana, making the moon lesser, making him a receiver, is called the sod that symptom, because the, the the cause, the, the, the contraction that brought in for all the worlds. The Mashiach's coming is in a way the tikkun for the symptom arishon. That's that's a concept that, that's very hard to wrap your mind around. Um, yeah. What will be the role of the sun when this happens? Like when the moon takes on its own, uh, its own light, it's no longer becomes a receiver. It'll be like the two cherubs on top of the holy, uh, the ark of the covenant. That's why the two cherubs facing each other, the mashpi and the kabbal are like husband and wife. They're like they're they're, they're they're they are they are the ones that are creating this 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 binary you know relationship that makes possible for existence. In a very practical way, it it literally means that you will have all the higher worlds and all the higher dimensions continue to exist, except they exist now in open communication with the physical dimension. The receiver here is the sphere of Malchus, it's the female aspect. It's very important to consciously understand that refers to the physical world. And the physical world, what is the darkness of the moon? The darkness of the Meqabal, the receiver, what makes him a receiver? is the fact that he doesn't see the big picture. He doesn't see, exist within a certain dark reality that you only see what's revealed to you. When this become that when when you were which so when you have a lot of light, you have a lot of revelation, like the time of the base of Mikdash. The time of Golos, you have a little bit of light, it's more dark. But at the ultimate level of darkness, the, the, the highest level of Golos, all of a sudden you're revealing your own essential light, all of a sudden you're not receiving from anyone else. There is no dark and light, there is no ups and downs. There's no more concealment. Now that, the odd, the odd thing is that that in and of itself is a process. So this, this so, so, so you see, you, ha, you, have this, you have this new reality where every Jew is on the level of Rabbi Shem Baruch has to re- reveal it within the world, and yet it's only as a spark. And it has to be revealed in the world like and grow until it becomes its own, you know, stands up on its own, so to speak. So the same great process is also within the process of the coming of Mashiach. Which is what makes it hard. This point, I just, I just said the world is different, right? I explained what's the difference in the world. But what I'm saying now is that that process itself is gradual. And the reason it's gradual is because it's not... Itzias Mitzrayim was Mashpi and Mekabla. HaKadosh Baruch revealed himself and took us out from Mitzrayim and did a lot of miracles in the world. The world was receiving light. It was receiving great revelation. When that revelation went down, the world regressed again. This time, the world itself is revealing its own essence, which is godliness. So, it has to come from within the world. It coming from within the world is us internalizing this in our lives. And when a Jew realizes this, all of a sudden the whole world was created to serve him. Now, if he doesn't realize this, a fly is on high, uh, uh, a mosquito is on a higher level than him. This is the point. Bishvili Nivra Oilam is when you understand that I was created to serve my master. Which means when you see yourself as nothing more, nothing less than Merkava Telokus, as just godliness revealing itself in the world, which is this level of Yehud, of unity. Okay, that's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai felt that way. How do you get to this level? So now it's available to each and every one of us. How? Well, yeah, but this time it's not coming from above. You have to reveal it from within yourself. To internalize it. Ah. So Let's go more inside. Mm. Once we colonize the moon, like what's, the, what's the first step after landing on the moon? What do we do? No, it was a sign that landing on the moon was a nice simon uh, of conquering the. But well, I'm giving a mystical interpretation into into uh, oh, into world that. events. That's not what I'm we talking about. If you're thinking about the physical moon, then you're not you're you're too grounded. You're not thinking at the dimensions. 
Why? We're now learning mysticism. You're, 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 you're talking, now, now you have to know the dimension you're of now. When you talk about the moon, you're talking about the, the, the mystical significance of the moon, which is receiving the light of the sun and, and is, is a light to the world. What was the revelation when uh, the guy lit the uh, Madeira on the moon? I don't know. I answer. The real so answer. High. The real answer is I don't know. It was so high that he, had to, he blew up when he came back into orbit. That, that's the answer. He hit such high minus you know, above the world that he died because he couldn't come back to the world and explain to people what the heck he what, what happened up there because he himself didn't know what happened up there but he did a mitzvah. Well, that's what happened, bro. Where? Okay. I'm drunk. I'll well, take it. This is like 2006 or something. 2007. He was the first. Jewish okay. astronaut, he to go to uh, space, Israeli guy, he lived 